After a week characterized by booming cases, we continue to look at U.S. hospitalizations reaching all-time highs. And we continue to see the tightening of restrictions as the economy braces for what could be a very long winter. And with all of this in the forefront, people are coming from far and people are coming from wide. Some are speaking truth and others are speaking lies. But all are asking just one simple question. And that question is what? What, Charlie, are the top three stocks for this week? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about the top three stocks for this week. But first, we must talk about what happened last week. What happened last week, Charlie? Well, in last week's top three stocks video, we talked about how Plug was due for earnings on Monday. It was an electric vehicle stock, and it ended up running to 2478, which is about a 30% run. In comparison, the market as a whole closed only like 2% up on the week, so a 30% run is pretty solid. Next, FTech. This was one of my favorite briefing plays this last week. FTech was up on earnings from the prior day, but was holding quite strong. I said, wait for new strength. And at open, we got that new strength and the price nearly doubled. But by far my favorite play last week from the briefings was G-Tech. Briefed on it because they announced they would be offering integrated electric drivetrains for their electric forklifts and was up pre-market. This guy nearly tripled after briefing. Next, we spoke about ACB and how it was part of the big green monster, which is the MJ industry, and how we need to watch it on Monday because of earnings. ACB was a runoff play that we briefed on prior to that 50% run. And this Monday, ACB gapped up early on and then sold off. Twitter, we talked about the earnings overreaction and how I saw value in dip buying it upon signs of strength. However, this is a play that is certainly still in effect, and it'll be interesting to see if we get a rebound this week. My analysis and goals on this play still stay the same. But anyways, folks, you know that a lot of work goes into making a video like this, and the only thing that I really ask is that you hit that ravishing like button. Ravish that button, folks. And quick plug, let's be real for a second. A lot of you have no idea what you're doing in the stock market. A lot of you are dabbling, a lot of you have no clear direction nor structure, and to solve this problem we built ZipTraderU. ZipTraderU will forge you into a trader from the ground up with our lessons, private chat, and morning briefings. Obviously not everybody needs a program, but for folks who are struggling and feel like they're sort of aimlessly wandering around the stock market, well I recommend just reading over ZipTraderU.com to see what we offer and whether or not it is a good fit. Okay, first, NEO. So NEO is going to be reporting earnings Tuesday, and we did a complete breakdown of NEO yesterday, so check that out if you want a complete breakdown. But from a trader's perspective, this is a stock that's up 1,000% on the year and is cooling off. But the big reason that it's cooling off is because of this short seller report from Citron, and headlines are just abounding with hype over this. Same short seller predicts a downfall of China's soaring stock. Renowned short seller says Neo is a goner. King of the short sellers says Neo no more. Blah, 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 the usual short seller hype. It's not like the business model of Neo was any different after the short seller report. It's not like the things that they pointed out were any different, but because this famed short seller said that it was time to short it, everybody panicked and it sold off. But if you look at the tip ranks ranking on this short seller, their success rate in their rankings is a little better than a flip of a coin. So when you hear that this famed king of the short sellers is betting against Neo, and so everybody should be scared. Well, only 32 of this holy short seller's last 59 rankings were successful. So again, that's a little bit better than a flip of a coin. These guys did a similar thing with Shopify. They said Shopify was in the perfect storm for a large setback. Shopify dove almost immediately. Everybody was freaking out. They're like, oh my God, the king of the short sellers said sell Shopify. That means that we're idiots if we don't sell. But what happened long-term? Well, this year, Shopify went up to highs at 1146. King of the short sellers said that it'd be down to 100 within the next 12 months. Let's be real. We can be wrong. Analysts can be wrong. I'm wrong sometimes. You're wrong sometimes. Everybody's wrong sometimes. But here's the thing. When you read the financial media freaking out over a short seller report, you have to understand what's actually going on. The goal of short sellers releasing these hit pieces isn't for accuracy, and it's sure as hell not to help us as traders. It's to create a sell storm that benefits their own short positions. Do you really think that short sellers release these hit pieces out of the kindness of their hearts? The reason short sellers love to make hit 
hit pieces on companies like Neo is because it's so easy to convince the public and change public opinion into thinking that they are overvalued. This is the perfect company to short and then put a hit piece on. It has tons of risk factors. It's based in China. It's up a thousand percent on the year. It's during a condition where some other EV companies have completely blown up in investors' faces. It's during a condition where some Chinese companies have blown up in investors' faces. Let's be real. Nothing in the next year or two is going to justify a 1,000% plus valuation. At least not in pure numbers of what they're doing now. That's just not possible. And so by shifting public opinion at a time where it's already run up so much, it's easy for short sellers to make a quick buck. But from the perspective of a trader, NEO is a company that has dramatic potential in the market that it sits in and has many unfair governmental advantages that we discussed yesterday. Yeah, the valuation is quite ridiculous based on the current numbers, but much like all the other EV companies, this isn't a company that's living in the present. It's living in far out in the future. So when I see this sell off, what I'm looking for is an opportunity to play off the bounce. And no, I do not think that it's impossible to see this sell off a lot more than it already has. Like I said earlier, a strong short seller report definitely has the ability to change opinions. And that could take a little longer to blow over. But once it blows over, the dip buying potential is undeniable. And so in conclusion, Earnings Tuesday is going to be Neo's opportunity to either accelerate its sell-off or reverse direction. And that's what we're going to need to be watching. Okay, next. Baba. Baba go sheep -a baba Now Baba got China'd. They had this whole fiasco where CEO Jack Ma tried to IPO their affiliate ant group. This was going to make tons and tons of money, but it was rejected by the regulators in China. And there's some speculation that this rejection was due to Jack Ma's criticism of Chinese regulators. And he criticized them saying that by being too risk averse, they're stifling innovation. You see, back in September, Chinese Communist Party published a list of guidelines that said the private sector needs more politically sensitive people. That of course means following what the Communist Party wants. And the decline of their IPO has been seen as a reminder to brash billionaire Ma on who calls the shots in that country. If I was trying to IPO something in China, I'd be like, sir, yes, sir. Well, have you been nice to the Chinese Communist Party? Sir, I recognize you as the eternal president of the Chinese Communist Party. My company will follow all communist guidelines because I know that is what breeds innovation. That is not enough. Rejected. My God, Chinese politics is really fascinating in some of the worst of ways. But anyways, Alibaba is the most valuable Chinese brand in the world. And this pushback has brought us back months at a time where Baba's revenue is projected to boom, with the Chinese economy doing better right now than most. And after all, Ant Group is probably going to end up IPOing in a different form sometime down the line. And so I see this little squabble as a short-term hit to Alibaba's price and would like to see it find a bottom and recover. And price targets on CNN money are pretty ridiculous right now, but even the more conservative pool of analysts at tip ranks is giving it 30% of upside. So not terrible monkey analyst rankings. Okay, and lastly, Chewy. Woof woof. Now this is a pet supply company that killed it this year as people preferred to order pet food online and in subscription services due to the pandemic. But I think that this is one of those plays that's growth was sped up by the pandemic, not created by the pandemic. What I mean is the market for this was sped up. It was going to happen eventually. I think that many of the customers that got used to subscriptions at Chewy aren't going to quit once the pandemic is over. I think we're going to see a lot of retention as now people are used to this service. So I do think that the pandemic accelerated the market for Chewy, but it didn't create it and it's not going to go away once the pandemic goes away. And with recent cooling off and earnings coming out in December, I'd say that any further dipping can be a great opportunity for us. Okay, folks, well, that wraps up the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join us on Zip Trader Circle. By the way, if you think our morning briefings would be helpful to you, you can get them by joining us at Zip Trader U, which is linked below with, of course, a coupon code that will get you $50 off. But let me warn you, Zip Trader U does have a one-time fee. But in return, you will get lifetime access to the program, the chat room, and all of the morning briefings. But the truth is that I don't think that ZipTraderU is worth paying for if you aren't going to complete it as designed. If I was somebody looking to do this program, you better bet that I'd be doing all of the lessons probably multiple times, that I'd be answering all of the quiz questions, that I'd be participating in the private chat every single day, and of course I'd be practicing relentlessly and I'd be keeping up to date with the morning briefings. And you better bet that I'd be taking advantage of that lifetime access for as long as I possibly needed, so that I can get the most bang for my buck. Casually put, I would want to get my money's worth out of ZipTraderU. 
So, I expect the same from you. Don't join us unless you're willing to get your money's worth out of it. And lastly, if you're wondering what broker to trade, well, we always recommend people over to Webull. They have many, many great features such as pre-market and after-hours trading and great scanners as well that are all pre-built in. And Vicker Swim, you have to set them up yourself. But in Webull, they're mostly pre-built and it's very, very, very fantastico. But anyways, if you are broker curious, I'll go ahead and put the link in the description below and you will get not one, not two, but... um. But three free stocks if you sign up and deposit with the link in the description below. Oof, I really oversold that one. But anyways, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, one shan't forget to subscribe.